Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about Mark Cuban speaking out against the SEC for not taking action and making change. So stay tuned and let's make some money. But guys, before I dive into the video, I just want to give a massive shout out to the 4,200 of you that have currently dinged that notification bell because you guys are always the first to watch a new video as soon as it's released. So guys, be sure to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell if you haven't already so that you don't miss another video just like this one. And just a quick one before I dive in with the key information, if you haven't already checked out my line of new AMC related merch, it's linked down in the description below. My personal favourite are the To The Moon t-shirt and also the Space Ape t-shirt. And I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, let's talk about Gary Gensler's recent tweets first and then also about what Mark Cuban had to say. If someone asks a lawyer, accountant or advisor if something is over the line, maybe it's time to take a step back from that line. Going right up to the edge of a rule or searching for some ambiguity in a text or a footnote may not be consistent with the law and its purpose. The spirit of the law is about protecting investors. Our rigorous enforcement regime at the SEC is about following the facts and the law, wherever they may lead, on behalf of investors and working families. This includes deceptive conduct by private funds, offering or accounting frauds, insider trading, market manipulation, failures to act in retail customers' best interests, reporting violations, best execution and fiduciary violations or any other form of misconduct. Gary then uses a bit of shorthand or slang which stands for in case you missed it, read my full remarks at FINRA's annual conference down here. Now I think there's both a positive and a negative to these tweets. The positive is that Gary is specifically addressing market manipulation and reporting violations and best execution all in one tweet. Therefore, Gary is clearly concerned about market manipulation and deceptive conduct by private funds and those reporting violations, just like the ones and the market manipulation that's going on in the AMC stock. Again, it's brilliant news that Gary Gensler is speaking out and is trying to raise awareness towards market manipulation, showing that he is going to take some actual action and make some actual changes and make sure these hedge funds can't continue their sketchy practices any longer. However, time and time again, we come back to the same problem. Yes, Gary is saying all these words, but we haven't yet seen any action. Has the market manipulation in AMC stock been stopped yet? Have these hedge funds been prevented from manipulating the AMC stock and aggressive shorting and pounding down the AMC price? And ultimately, has the AMC short squeeze happened yet? The answer to all of the above is no. Therefore, while Gary Gensler is saying things and making promising statements, these are currently false promises as he hasn't yet acted against what he's saying. Yes, he is saying that he's aware of the market manipulation and the reporting violations and the deceptive conduct by private funds, but most importantly, he hasn't made any change yet. Mark Cuban, for one, is somebody that's picked up on these false promises so far. And he tweeted saying, this is such rubbish. You didn't start the rubbish. Please don't continue it. If you were working on behalf of investors, you'd make it easy for questions by investors and business people to be asked and answered. You make it near impossible. Those who can't afford lawyers can only guess and not ask questions. Ask any retail investor to define insider trading. Your lawyers rarely agree. How can they know? Why won't the SEC honour the right to a jury trial? The risk doesn't leave the system is your best line, Gary. The risk in dealing with the SEC is always because of your system. Basically, what Mark Cuban is saying in these two tweets is that Gary doesn't really work for investors and work for the public. If he did, he'd make it easier for retail investors to ask questions and demand jury trials and, most importantly, investigations. And not only to demand just some random investigation, but to demand a proper and thorough investigation where facts are found and changes are made, not just an investigation to be performed and no one to care about what they found. Mark Cuban also then touched on Gary Gensler's tweet about crossing the line and said, how about making the lines bright and clear so people know what the rules are? The problem isn't that people are looking for grey areas, it's that there rarely are defined rules. Regulation through litigation traps all the people who can't afford a lawyer, accountant or advisor. And he said, ask yourself why there's thousands of lawyers at the SEC. 
Lawyers want to litigate in every business. If you need a lawyer to fix a problem, you've got a big problem. Why doesn't the SEC have thousands of people working to make sure there isn't need for thousands of lawyers? And he said, I'm happy to sit down and talk at any time, Gary. Basically, lawyers are used to fix problems, but litigation typically takes many years, especially litigation of large corporate problems. They can take 5, 10, 15 or 20 years or maybe even longer sometimes. Therefore, what Mark Cuban is saying is basically, Gary, if you employed actual investigators and people to actually enforce rules, then if rules were enforced, you wouldn't really need litigators to do the litigating. The rules just wouldn't be broken in the first place. Basically, if there were specific things that prevented hedge funds from manipulating the market or specific detection methods that detected market manipulation very quickly and issued instant punishment, then market manipulation wouldn't occur and you wouldn't need lawyers to investigate and litigate for years upon years upon years. I do think it's a good idea that Gary Gensler is getting more heavily involved in his role and seems to be acting on behalf of the investors per what his tweets say, but so far we haven't yet seen any tangible action. We have seen additional rulings coming into play and we've seen additional rulings being proposed And I guess at the same time, you can't just fix an entire broken market that's been broken for 50, 100 years, maybe even longer, and fix it in five minutes. It does take time to fix, but so far, it's not yet fixed just yet. I also wanted to touch on Adam Aaron's tweet here, saying a rousing standing ovation to Sony Pictures, who just unveiled its 2021 and 2022 movie Slay. The new Ghostbusters Afterlife opens November 11th, and Spider-Man No Way Home, opens December 17th, are spectacularly made movies. Mind-blowingly great. Congratulations to Sony. Bravo, bravissimo. Now, Sony obviously have a deal with AMC to exclusively show movies in their cinemas before releasing them on streaming platforms. So therefore, it's great that Sony have got a good line of movies for 2021 or the remainder of 2021 and 2022 as well. Because if Sony continue to produce good movies, then AMC is going to continue to grow their revenue as more people return back to the cinema because they'd rather watch movies at the movie theatre than watch it on a streaming platform. We also have an Autex update based on AMC's price movement yesterday. AMC's share price was up over 8.5% yesterday, generating losses of $270 million for short sellers so far in yesterday alone, or in yesterday's trading alone. Now again, this is great because it shows that shorts are still very heavily underwater. Yes, the price of AMC has fallen from $72 to $35 to $38, but shorts can't yet cover in this reason because they're still so heavily underwater and actually getting even more heavily underwater. Don't forget a lot of these big shorters started their short positions at $4 or $6, and therefore, even though AMC has fallen from $72 to $35 or $38, those short sellers aren't anywhere close to being in profit. Now, I also wanted to touch on the MC chart. Obviously, yesterday we saw a very good day coming back towards that $38, $39 resistance. We also saw good continuation of the MACD. The MACD obviously being positive is a very bullish sign. As I said last week, for the rest of this week, I'd really like us to push through this $38, $39 resistance and the whole $40 resistance as well, getting us back in a driver's seat. Throughout last week and this week, we've seen that percentage of total volume being short volume increasing from 50% now to a whopping 61%. This just shows the clear manipulation in the AMC price But on the upside, even though the short percentage is so high or the short percentage of overall volume being so high, AMC has been moving upwards over the last week or two. Looking at the overall market for reverse repos, we saw the ninth day in a row of over $1 trillion of reverse repos and a new all-time high of $1.135 trillion. Looking at the US Treasury balance, we've seen it decrease again from around $321 billion dollars to only $309 billion. Again, the treasury is still hemorrhaging cash. Guys, be sure to check out the links down in the description below to Moomoo in the US and Singapore and Free Trade in the UK to get some free shares. You can currently get a free share worth up to $350 and a guaranteed free share valued at around $60 from Moomoo at the moment and a free share worth up to £200 with Free Trade. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.